Good morning, everyone. So I'm very happy to be here. Today we're going to talk a session about the culture of entrepreneurship. So for the next hour, we're going to define, debate, and discuss what it means, the culture of entrepreneurship, and how it has impacted society today. Please remember that most of the discussion is going to be in between English and Russian, so use your translators if it is not understood. Before I start, I would like to quickly introduce our panels and also our experts that are here with us to help us better understand. As you know, the discussion will go from understanding what are the circumstances in becoming an entrepreneur, what are the stakeholders in the entrepreneurial ecosystems and how they have impacted to create a sustainable innovation hub. And also, I believe it is impossible to talk about entrepreneurship without talking about the permission of failure, which is critical to success. Finally, we will also try to have an angle of some of the minorities, such as women entrepreneurs, immigrants, and how they foster innovation. Do you hear me at least with the noise? Okay. And uh, foster innovation. Before I conclude, you don't understand? Yes? You, you're all on your right, perfect. Rules of the game, we have to speak loud, clearly, because we are translating in I don't know how many languages. It's good, we're global. Uh, I'm going to briefly introduce the speakers. So first, at the far right, we have Avi Aliman, who is founder and head of business development at Value Biotech. Later on, they will explain to you a bit more their journey and endeavors. Then we have Mr. Wong, president of TUS Holdings. We can applaud. <laughs> Mr. Sergei Nedorolsvel, please know that I will be pronouncing your names wrong, is currently not here but will be joining us shortly. We have Mr. Konstantin Fokin, which is the Chief Executive Officer of the Moscow Innovation Development Center. Please applaud. <laughs> Mr. Alexei Komisarov, which is the advisor to the mayor of Moscow, one of his many hats. And finally, Mrs. Che Guru, which I know I'm pronouncing wrong, director of Greenworks in Russia. I would also like to present our experts now, if you may please stand up so the people know whom you are. So we have Mr. Ilya Dubinsky and Mr. Sergei Gribov. Mr. Ilya Dubinsky is the director of the Center for Entrepreneurship and Innovation at the Skolkovo Institute of Science and Technology. And Mr. Sergei Gribov is managing partner at Startup Access. Again, we have such a diverse panel. I can assure you that as serial entrepreneurs, founders, investors, directors, they have many hats. And I'll let them explain what are the most relevant today to the discussion. So the session is going to be composed of two. Firstly, we are going to have a brief presentation of each of our speakers and then myself and the audience, we will ask questions to both the experts and the panelists. To get a feel of the room, maybe it would be a good moment to see kind of where we are all from. So quickly, from a raise of hands, who is from Asia? Raise your hand. Okay. Europe. Who is from Europe? Ah, not a lot of people, okay. Um, North America? Two, good. South America? Africa? Okay, we're lacking a continent. Oceania? Okay. And then a more important question. Whom here believes that in their home country, in their culture, failure is accepted? If you believe failure is accepted, please raise your hand. Okay, four hands raised. Very interesting. So maybe let's start the discussion with a more complete introduction. Avi, I let you take Avi, I let you take the lead. Maybe explain a bit yourself and why you're here in the panel. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my name is Avi Aliman. 
I'm uh, basically an entrepreneur. I've been an entrepreneur all my adult life. <laughs> it's been hard to, to say otherwise. I've never really had a job with a company. Uh, the reason why I'm here, I was invited by uh, one of the members of one of the clusters at Skolkova. And uh, I'm very happy to be here. I've lived in Moscow a long time. Uh, 15 years of my life I spent in this city, most of my development years as an adult. And uh, I'm happy to be here. Is there something that particularly... No, you I'll ask the question okay. so we can start. Um, you all do not know, but Avi has lived in all the continents of the world nearly. Uh, he is born in Israel and then moved from uh, Russia uh, the US, uh, Italy, if I'm not mistaken, now where you're based. Uh, um, the question I want to ask is through this, uh, through this life of diversity, for you, how did you manage failure having lived it in so many different societies? And then maybe in which region and why was it so beneficial to fail? So I guess I, I've been very lucky in every place that I've been, at the time that I've been there, failure is acceptable. So in America, failure is acceptable. Failure is a must. If you live in America and you work in America, you have to fail to continue to develop. It's like a proxy. Uh, if you haven't failed, something went wrong, at least once. Uh, in Israel, failure is part of success as well. So people fail, it, it's a learning process for them. And I have to say, in early days in Russia, failure was not a problem because opportunity was everywhere. If you failed in one business, the next day you were doing another business. So that really didn't, didn't make an issue. So I, I actually, the only country where I found failure is not acceptable in terms of um, culturally is actually in Italy. In Italy, failure is looked upon pretty badly. Interesting. Okay, uh, now I move the question to Mr. Wang, um, I would like to ask you, um, so with Tust Holding Companies, you're really trying to build the ecosystem in China, but also to promote companies from China to the rest of the world by organizing their roadshow or raising their funds. How do you think the government should be involved in promoting entrepreneurship? And should it be an actor in building the startup or the more innovation hub in the region? Okay, uh, morning everybody. I want to speak uh, with you, you uh, Chinese. Uh, uh, my company, we build an investment science park. Uh, we have very many relation with government. I think government is very important to us and to um, uh, so many companies in our science park. So, I think the科技园还有科技园企业发展过程的作用，不应该简单的是一种政府的投资刺激等等这些方式，更多的我想政府的作用应该是建立一个一个环境，一个很适合企业发展的一个环境。也许，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，
uh, shouldn't be underestimated. The government should certainly produce an impact on the promotion of medium and small businesses. And finally, I, wa I want uh, to tell you that our scientific pool is, uh, is in a close cooperation with Kolkovo and, and tries to inspire the uh, to inspire young people in two countries to develop small and medium business. He hopes that in two years uh, we will see the same event here in this country and we will see new uh, successes in uh, business promoted by the young. Uh, um, Mrs. Juru, may I please How are you uh, managing the cultural obstacles of, pro of promoting a Chinese entrepreneur in a Russian context, in Russian society? Are there obstacles and how are you managing? The process of my entrepreneurship splits into two stages. First, uh, uh, 10 years ago, I just started to my business here, and I, uh, it was a failure. Because at the time, my company uh, was planned uh, to, to be started up in Singapore. And at the same time, the Singapore's government uh, made, uh, made a, a decision not to welcome Chinese entrepreneurs in this country. So the second uh, attempt was in Beijing, and it was a success. So originating from my story, you can see that uh, cultural obstacles here in Russia certainly influence business and its development. And currently, my job is to create and manage more than 20 business and, and, and techno parks. Uh, here and in America and in South Korea, we also plan uh, to set up such techno parks here in Russia. Currently, uh, we fo focus on the differences in culture and mentality of our donations. And anyway, uh, despite those differences and despite some misunderstanding, we need to respect all the traditions and cultural specific. Uh, and certainly, uh, the Russian government should help Chinese businessmen here. Juru, if I'm pronouncing correctly, according to you, what is uh, the success factor?
factor in promoting a, um, a culture of entrepreneurship in China and promoting it in Russia, if so? It's a great difference. Uh, a lot of businesses have become successful here because uh, because they clearly understood the difference. Uh, we saw that uh, a lot of businesses failed here because uh, they couldn't evolve due to these differences. We are here in Russia, and we have been working here about 18 years, so we know quite a lot. We learned quite a lot. And we also want to certainly somehow mitigate this impact that uh, uh, well shows the difference in the mentality and culture of two nations uh, well with respect to the development of innovations so we like Russia we like Russians we respect this nation but in communication we feel the difference so uh, we want to introduce innovations in communications, per se, because a Russian in 1958 developed the very idea and definition of innovations, and we now learn from you. Okay, thank you very much. I'm going to speak Russian, if you don't mind. По поводу моей сегодняшней роли, я совсем недавно перешел на эту позицию. Последние годы я был министром правительства Москвы и руководил департаментом науки, промышленной политики и предпринимательства. И безусловно, я и считал и до прихода на госслужбу, и сейчас в этом не сомневаюсь, что предпринимательство очень важное, играет очень важную роль в развитии города и если мы не будем поддерживать предпринимательство, если не будет вообще предпринимателей uh, what we started our discussion with. I've been in this business for 20 years, more than I'm an official now. And usually I keep on saying that I started my own business in 1993. But even before that, I had some failures. In 91, for example, the first company I established flopped down. And the key reason was that there was no proper communication between the partners and agreements and arrangements. And I drew a proper conclusion when building a new uh, uh, business. I started negotiating relationship between the partners before we established the company, how to, to share the functions, management, how to behave oneself. And this helped me to make my next business successful. Even, even now, when I have nothing to do with this business I established earlier, it's successful. I have to disagree with Avi, if I'm right, concerning um, uh, failures in the Russian culture. In Russia here, failure is not very good according to our culture. And this is a problem. 
because any business failure is a course for getting out of it and do something else. But I believe that this is good experience, uh, lessons learned, and we need to use it. We need to support tolerance to failures. When we were talking a bit earlier with Avi, with Israel and the US, where really, uh, I mean, I've met VCs that if a company hasn't failed, then they're, they're not gonna invest in it thinking, okay, they're gonna fail in probably my company that I'm gonna invest in. That's how important failure is. With your personal experience, how do we transmit this in Russian society or many other societies where the career choice is still, it's, it's still seen in a minority? We see promotion of it and innovation, but how do you change it in the, in the foundation of the culture of, of Russian society? And maybe you can give an answer and also Constantin uh, living in Moscow to see what are the solutions you're providing? Я, наверное, тоже буду говорить по-русски, потому I'm going to speak Russian uh, because we are here in Moscow. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say hello uh, to all our participants, our Chinese partners. And this is our first session, first panel discussion. Welcome to Moscow. I welcome you here. Uh, Alice, we have a well-known uh, film, movie, Beware a Car. Um, it was a innovative film, and when they decided to do something else, maybe uh, to have a much better film. And they had a very well-known um, expression, how about staging a Shakespeare play? So let me now try to raise uh, the uh, so-called level. I believe that entrepreneurship or risk take of business initiative is very natural for man. Uh, because um, kids are being born and they start developing without any limitations and constraints. Limitations are being imposed on them by school, their parents, management, governance, and this is how they got their limitations. That's why I do believe that we need to focus on entrepreneurship climate development uh, establishing a enabling environment is getting rid of limitations, constraints, not external things like, for example, uh, establish incubators within very strong, forceful limitations when we don't have that many freedoms. And this is exactly what we saw in Russia in early 90s when the old Soviet system, the legacy, was dismantled, and we saw 100,000 people starting their businesses. For example, Alexander started his own business. There were no limitations. Um, people would not say, don't take a risk. Uh, don't position oneself as something extraordinary. And immediately, people started building their businesses. Now. The impetus is that being a risk taker is very natural for a person. So um, experiencing failures and successes, you enjoy yourself. So making business is enjoyment. But if you're sufficiently stubborn, patient, and unafraid of making mistakes, this is a way to be successful. How? to change the situation where we see that it is not that enabling. And actually, that concerns a lot of other countries, not only Russia, it concerns the United States of America and um, Western countries in Europe. There are limitations all over the world. Uh, the most useful step forward is uh, when people get together 
uh, when they love it, when they enjoy um, making sure that uh, the government behaves. So, so I do believe that businesses or their representatives uh, need to build strong uh, non-governmental institutions and ensure that the government begins. Uh, they need to be part of the government as well. They need to establish entrepreneurship culture and restaking culture within the government. If it's very difficult to move forward beyond the government, you need to be inside. Otherwise, in this case, uh, you could see a change in the relationship of the government uh, to businesses. They will be as respected as other professions like teachers, doctors, uh, space people. So coming back uh, to the impetus, except for the movement, uh, for example, uh, making sure that business is well represented in the government, they should be part of it. Uh, you need to influence the government. So if uh, people don't have any experience, business experience, they will never understand how risk-taken changes the world. And they wouldn't understand how to support it. And those support mechanisms will be very weak. Uh, for example, myself. Um, you can start uh, providing an answer. If we can have a microphone, please. Here, on your... Uh, but, but probably stand here so I can face you guys. <laughs> um, thank you for the question. Um, I'm currently, uh, I, I used to be an entrepreneur and I used to be an investor too. I'm currently working at a university, and uh, the reason I decided that I would like to work at the university after a while, I actually first started working and then I decided that I actually like it, is, is because um, suddenly I understood that that's where we are creating entrepreneurs and innovators. Um, students, in fact, carry most of the uh, hope, from my point of view. It's very difficult for a person who has been doing something for 50 years to actually, uh, well, who has been working in a structure uh, in a large company for 50 years to step out of it, out of the situation when you know you are taken care of um, and into the unknown land of entrepreneurship. For the students, it's, it's all pretty much the same. If you teach them um, that it's not all that difficult, if you teach them basic skills, um, if you let them what is most important, try a few times while they are still within the university walls. They will come out prepared. They will have a chance to fail a couple of times. But in fact, your questions, I'm, I, work, I work at a university at Skolkov Institute of Science and Technology. But I, I do believe what uh, Konstantin said, that you, you, you got to start teaching that early enough. And in fact, teaching that, for the most part, involves you know, not teaching much. Um, it involves allowing people make mistakes. Um, just an example. Um, the way st the uh, courses are structured in Russia, in most European countries, I can't really say about Asian countries, um, they are structured in ter to, to make everybody similar. Like, for example, um, I, I believe that if, if you guys remember your experiences in high school or in, in, in elementary school, your mathematics teacher most likely asked you to start writing like two steps below the top line and two steps, you know, two, two, two dots 
left of the, of the left border of the page. And if you actually didn't do that, that was a mistake. Well, um, that's an approach that, that is taken in Russia. If you look at the countries where, uh, in fact, innovation and entrepreneurship are the norm, and where risk taking is a norm, you wouldn't find a teacher that is asking for that. So trying to very early impose order and enforce order on kids um, makes it more difficult for those kids to be free afterwards. And, and in involving kids in all kinds of interesting projects early on uh, actually makes them more open to innovation. Like, uh, try to see, well, many of you guys are still very young and don't have kids, but those of you who do, uh, most likely you have tried to let your kids work, you know, try to play with robots, with all kinds of toys, um, to sort of to have as, as much outside of school walls as possible. That is, that is a key. And, and uh, I do believe you can teach innovation and I do believe you can teach entrepreneurship. And most of that teaching is not teaching knowledge, it's actually teaching attitude. Um, skills a little bit, but attitude is the most important part. So culture is very important. Thank you very much. I completely agree. Entrepreneurship is a lifestyle. So I'm going to start walking around because it's more fun. Um, on another subject, talking about structure, indeed, women are more and more structured with their cultural, uh, with, with the cultural framework of having to not have a career, become a, a, a wife, uh, becoming a mother, and what does that impede on entrepreneurship? So in emerging markets, in reality, Entrepreneurship is a solution because the other industries many times have been, are led by men. Sergey, may you maybe explain to us through your incubator, do you have a lot of women entrepreneurs and what's the situation in Russia? Uh, okay, I'm really not an expert on like women and entrepreneurship, but uh, I, f uh, I, I think, yeah, I, I can from here. I think in, in general uh, what we do in our accelerator program, we're bringing startup mostly from Russia to Boston to US for two weeks program and uh, if we're talking about uh, number of women in like startups in, uh, in Russia it's certainly way less when uh, you would see number of women in startups in US. In US I don't know I mean I don't know the numbers but you see probably at least like 25-30% at least, I would guess you're probably more familiar with the statistics. In, in Russia, I would say uh, from the startups you see probably less than 20. I, I think the situation is changing, especially with like uh, more younger generation. Uh, and I, I, I think it's good, but it's uh, in some sense uh, I, I would guess it's also harder for women because, like, if you're going to the startup, if you if you're creating a startup, it means you're doing it something for the long run. Uh, every startup is like, on average, like eight to ten years adventure, and you have to be committed fully. So for many women, it's kind of hard choice between being committed fully to the, to work or doing something, raising a family, etc. Uh, so I guess it's. But it's interesting to see that we don't have a lot of uh, programs, solutions, tools for women in many regions um, still. Any women entrepreneur in the audience? I see a lot of women faces, no women entrepreneurs. Maybe I ask now the audience, do you have any questions to the panels or the experts now that they have all briefly introduced themselves? Questions? It's your chance. Now or never kind of opportunity. Yes. Добрый день, меня Виктор. Good morning. I'm Victor. I'm that kind of entrepreneur. I built my business without uh, a government involvement. Uh, some people believe that it's good to work with the government. Uh, I'm not against working with the government but I don't even know which first steps to take. If I talk about business, we need, first of all, to make cooperation and to make deals, while working with the government is mostly government procurement. And being small, I cannot get access to government procurement. So, how to get there?
our Russian, Russian panelists, what do the entrepreneurs have? What can they do? Well, actually, uh, it's that kind of a problem. And I can cite my business that for 20 years of making my own company, we never made a contract with government procurement. Never. Again, right now our situation in Moscow is changing in a very rapid way. And I advise you to be proactive to seek your chance in government procurement because I've seen quite a bit over a year or two people believe they couldn't get access to government procurement but as a result they were winners so Moscow right now is open I'm wondering why it is open that much at least why things like that happen and uh, I'm, I'm constant it is not with us uh, but So we started up a system of open requests. One, the city and the city administration do not announce just or do not announce bids for a certain product, but announce a problem, announce a per, an issue, and try to find a solution to that. So it is an absolutely open international system. And uh, uh, and uh, for example, we had a request how to uh, manage uh, the noise level in Moscow in residential areas. So when three solutions were found, they came from different countries of the world, and one of them is being implemented. Um, another question we have in, in defining the culture of entrepreneurship is that many societies have great inventors, so scientists, researchers, makers. But then the process of going from inventors to innovators is something else, and that's that's where the sustainability of uh, of innovation innovation uh, hub comes. Maybe uh, this is kind of an open question because we have several researchers, scientists, and a very scientific background. Do you consider yourselves uh, uh, inventors before anything, or entrepreneurs? And what's the most difficult obstacle in executing a project when you have when you're on at the idea level whom i who would like to answer Ilya? i'm not sure i'm going to answer the question because i'm not sure i understood it correctly but i will see but um a friend of mine um once said that in his very large organization if somebody wanted to derail a discussion it was to ask in the beginning of discussion what's innovation and then the discussion was only about that topic. You're absolutely right, innovation and invention are two different things. Um, there are skills that go into making an invention. Invention is when somebody, it's, it's, it's a result of scientific enterprise. You pretty much come up with a, with a discovery. Um, innovation is when this discovery makes an impact on society. And the impact doesn't have to be monetary. Um, I have a very good friend who has created an algorithm that is now used in uh, kidney exchange. Essentially, no money is being exchanged, but people who need kidney transplants can now find in a very long chain of exchanges the kidney that works for them. So that's, that's in innovation as well. Um, there are skills that go into innovation, but going back to the topic of our today's um, discussion, skills can be learned. Typically, they are learned in the process of doing things, not reading books, not listening to lectures. And you pretty much have to have spirit in you to push ahead with this, um, sort of that, that culture. Culture is, is, uh, is a combination. If each of you guys feel that something is okay, then all of us create a common culture that something is okay. So in fact, um, for all of us to create in Russia or in France or in Italy or in where, in Israel they've already done it, I guess as I've said, uh, culture that, that innovation is fine, well, e each of us pretty much has to do it, has to practice it. That's, that's it. Um, I don't know. I, I might have strayed away from your question. Straight away, but it's a good answer. So uh, I will accept it. Avi, yes, please take. 
uh, I'm not a scientist and I'm not an inventor, but I am the business side of a venture that started out with an idea of a doctor. And if I may, I'd like to ask my partners who just walked in the room earlier to stand up. Uh, one is Renzo, he's a, mechanic, he's a mechatronic engineer. And Louis, who I maybe left the room, he's a mechanic engineer. And our story is, is uh, a bit is in line with what you were saying, that basically we have a doctor, he has a, a need, uh, his need was for a certain type of tool. Uh, he's an innovator, he sits on many innovation committees, uh, European, American, endoscopic surgeon committees, uh, technology committees, he sees lots of different things and he, he didn't see the tool that he needed. And in the end he had an idea this idea incubated, but he's not a businessman, he's a doctor. His job is to save lives, not to turn ideas into, into money. And it took him a long time to incubate this, and then I think that the catalytic converter that actually created the stimulus in him was the fact that he met different people along the way that could contribute to bringing his idea to reality. So he met a mechanical engineer who started to speak to him about the feasibility of his idea into making something out of metal that was actually conceptual with what his needs were. He met a mechatronic engineer who said, I can help you make it smaller and actuate it. And then he found a business person who said, you know, I can help you package that and sell it to investors to get the money that necessary to start developing. And this is how this started. And I think this is very, very important culturally it, it, the barriers are huge. It, where the culture he comes from, he's supposed to be a doctor. I think that who's ever said that uh, children are taught at an early age what their barriers are, this is true. His barrier was supposed to save lives, not uh, make ideas happen. And so this mix of cultures allowed for these things to happen. And uh, today we're on a road to actually develop his idea and turn it into reality. So it's a mix of finding the right people to surround yourself with and that will help you to compensate for those maybe for those characteristics that maybe you don't have and at the same time it's the pushing through cultural barriers if you're in a place that's not very inducive to to crossing a barrier that's not supposed to be crossed then you know you need to find people who can help you overcome that or even move to a culture that's more welcoming interesting the the idea of uh, move if you don't find it at your own place and that's something people tend to forget we have a question yes uh, yes you just introduce yourself is it working is it, is it, is it yeah put it close uh, yeah. what okay uh меня зовут мустей my name is Mustetis Anton. I'm from St. Petersburg. To give, uh, Victor and I uh, represent here an international um, organization, uh, 100 Innovators. I have a comment and a question. So I would like to comment on the role of a woman uh, in entrepreneurship and uh, female entrepreneurship um, as, uh, um, as a whole. So uh, in St. Petersburg, I have uh, uh, friends uh, and uh, business ladies, and um, among them, uh, we mentioned uh, that a woman should decide to should she uh, stay with the family or with business. So she always has to make choices. So I have a lot of examples in my life. It was with my friends and business associates who uh, actually can absolutely combine family and business. And uh, for, for instance, uh, uh, one of my friends has a, a special playground uh, for their ch uh, kids in the office. So the, this is one of the approaches to found a solution for uh, for the 
female participation in business. So we shouldn't just delineate uh, these two, uh, you know, positions of, of a woman. Uh, so to remember only about the family and kitchen, and, or or forget about it and uh, be indulged into business and uh, into entrepreneurship. So the question, while well, talking about the culture of entrepreneurship, and you probably would support me in that. We should, uh, you know, emphasize that Russia has uh, its cultural and social features. Maybe we should uh, define them. Uh, should define some traits of a Russian entrepreneur. Um, what um, we should decide what this entrepreneurship, Russian entrepreneur, uh, should be or should do uh, to be a success. The question or the remark is more what are the traits of an entrepreneur? What should be the traits of an entrepreneur? Okay, Sergey. Uh, okay, I'll talk. Uh, in English, uh, I think, uh, frankly, I think there is no need to uh, kind of define what should be the traits of a Russian entrepreneur as opposite to any other entrepreneur. I think uh, basically being an entrepreneur is in some sense uh, about being, uh, it, it's, it's in some sense about freedom. Basically, uh, entrepreneurs are people who do not what we're told, but what we think is the right thing to do. So they create things uh, which nobody think about. Uh, they uh, do stuff in some ways nobody think about before them. So uh, I think the worst thing you can do to, to kind of create entrepreneur is to put them in some kind of framework. Uh, basically, you just give them freedom and you will see a bunch of different entrepreneurs who really very different from each other, but they're all successful. And I think that's kind of the, the essence of being an entrepreneur. Okay, understood. Uh, indeed, entrepreneurship and putting uh, traits and constraint is contradictory. But at the same time, when we want to promote a culture, it's very difficult to just say, be free. And creating this freeness of spirit and action is very difficult when we have the luggage, the heritage of culture and our history. Um, Mr. Komisarov, a lot of governments are seeking to become, or cities are seeking to become the Silicon Valley. And we've seen uh, the success of the Silicon Valley, but also in Israel of Tel Aviv uh, more specifically. Do you think it's right to aspire to this model? Is there one model of innovation? Um, I don't think that there is this single model uh, that should be uh, imitated by everybody, but certainly the government uh, or any government should uh, create conditions for that. So we are now in, uh, here at this hub, Technopolis Moscow, and it is one of the projects which would uh, serve a site for uh, the promotion of innovation, innovative activity in this city. Well, the role of the government is much wider than just to create an infrastructure. Uh, or could be, at least could be wider. So today, business incubators were mentioned, and uh, there was also a uh, question of models discussed. But, uh, uh, well, what is going uh, around in the world, we try to do in Moscow as well. So there, it is a transition from business incubation to acceleration. Uh, it's, um, at first, we talked about failures, about tolerance um, to failures. So the business incubator model implies a certain time for the company's development that would uh, uh, either develop or fail. 
by the end of the day. And uh, well, the failure very often is the end of uh, an entrepreneur's, uh, entrepreneur's attempt. So, and so this, uh, uh, the action should be directed to allowing lessons from failures and to creating new and new projects. And uh, this is very vigorously developed being developed in the Silicon Valley and in Israel and here in Russia we also need to, to work a lot of that and to, to find incentive, incentives uh, to, uh, st to stimulate uh, failures. One innovation model that may be best practices to implement around the world. Um, Avi, as a serial entrepreneur, uh, according to you, no, maybe what is your motto? What, what, do, what makes you drive and, and go about your day every day to kind of understand what's the, what thrives entrepreneurship every day? I think uh, for me personally, uh, the issue is freedom. I think that, that was mentioned before. I don't like to be in, in a box. I don't like to be told what to do. I like to have the problem put in front of me and try to think of creative ways to resolve them. Uh, I think it's something about the person's nature. And uh, I think that if you want to be an entrepreneur, you have to be managing both this desire for sense of freedom with an ability to be humble and understand that this freedom doesn't give you the opportunity or the ability or the right to do only as you like from, uh, from your in internal desire, but you must be very, very um, communicative with the world around you. You must be sensitive to the world around you, to the partners that you have working with you. It's, it's, it's easier for an entrepreneur to plow in a direct line, but that's usually the road to failure. You have to be very, you have to be determined to go your way uh, freedom is important, but you have to be very sensitive to the people around you and to the culture that you're working in. Uh, for me, understanding that I'm working in Italy, certain things I can do in Israel, they don't work in Italy. And as much as I'd like to push them through, it, it doesn't happen. And I think vice versa. So really the freedom to do what you want to do and to, to try to find solutions to things, but be very attentive to the area around you and the people and the culture that you're operating in. Henry Etzkowitz, in Triple Helix Association uh, from Italy and Silicon Valley. Uh, on science parks for, for Wang Ji Wu, uh, a science park is usually thought of as a place for successful technology enterprises or for large companies to locate to be near the university. So what is the role of the science park with respect to uh, entrepreneurship and startups, especially in your situation at Tsinghua? Uh, uh, thank you for your question. Uh, and uh, in 20 years ago, we learned from American. We learned from Stanford University Science Park. And, uh, 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 chi triangle, triangle science park, and now, uh, now twenty years, uh, they, twenty years ago we learned from them, and now they come to Beijing. The the CEO of American, they said to me, now I we should uh, learn from you. So I I want to say that uh, learn. Uh, China from American, from uh, Russia, and uh, we learn each other is very important. Uh, now I, I find another another thing. Uh, now our science park is the most big science park and the best science park in 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 the world. But I think American, uh, the Wall Street, Wall Street, the finance. Finance is uh, the most important in occupator 
for enter enterprises, especially for some small company uh, like VC, uh, venture capital is very important. So, so uh, I think uh, uh, for for us and for Russia, the, the important thing is not a government for a size park for a small company. The most important thing is finance. So we should build a finance system uh, like uh, like America, like uh, Wall Street. We should build many uh, venture capital, uh, many PE, and um, many chance for small cap small company to IPO, to find money. Uh, and uh, another thing is we help them to find uh, and market to so help them. So when small company they success. That our science park may success. That our country may success. Thank you. Thank you very much. Indeed, we didn't uh, go into the subject a lot, but indeed there is a sign in the entrepreneurial culture of the entrepreneurs and how do we promote them and build more entrepreneurs. But also the side of the financial sector. How do we bring more money? Because. Uh, we see in many uh, economies that pre-seed, seed stage investments are provided by government, business angels. But then where do we go on? How do we organize the follow-up fundings? Maybe I can ask an open question. Do you believe the government should act the role as the VC to try and help promote investment in the, in the country? Is someone interested in replying? Avi? Uh, I just came from a two-week visit to, to Israel uh, where we're looking to potentially move our project to find financing. Uh, we're at the stage where we're just before VC financing. Uh, we're, we're creating the first prototype. And I have to say that the model that I understood that works in Israel is exactly that. It's a state-backed uh, VC model. So. Uh, if you have an idea in Israel, you go to a VC, the, the usually VC for at the seed stage, they will then take the project to the chief scientist of the government. The chief scientist will pass the project, and if he passes the project, then f the first seven hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars of prob uh, will be eighty-five percent backed by the government. Now, probably this has been a huge success story in Israel because it allows for VCs to invest in many more projects because their 15% contribution in cash, but 100% contribution in time. They're the ones that actually manage the project. They're the ones that incubate. They're the ones that give it the manpower that the government cannot give because the government's there to regulate, not, not to stimulate entrepreneurship. At the same time, this probably works for smaller uh, countries. I'm not sure if this is repeatable in a large scale, uh, most probably because of abuse. So maybe smaller governments have easier time to do this. Larger governments need to find a different maybe uh, role or a different model that functions for them. But in Israel, it's proved to be a, definitely a success. Yes. We have, oh, yes, quickly uh, to finish this off. This is really a wonderful experience. Just a couple of words. From my point of view, uh, the government cannot be a good entrepreneur or a business person and couldn't be a good venture supporter uh, because we need to have uh, better knowledge and uh, take bigger responsibility. At the same time, the government, the state, should support uh, the industry in uh, many ways. I'd like to share a Moscow experience with you. Uh, uh, in Russia, the biggest uh, failure in supporting is that we don't have that many angel situations. We supported the angel uh, financing we uh, give loans to angel companies 
it helps to support the venture development. On the one hand, on the other hand, the government, the Moscow Foundation, uh, doesn't select a project, doesn't make a decision to finance. It just adds money. Uh, which would be supported and financed by business angels. Five minutes left. It's your chance to ask an ultimate question. Do you have any questions left? Okay. Then I want to thank the panelists for the discussion. Through this discussion, what we understood is maybe more specifically the traits of the entrepreneurs. May it be the importance of freedom, the importance of staying a kid, which is a nice way to put it. And, um, and also the traits of wanting to push forward their project. Uh, government involvement, I think we have different point of views. Uh, how involved should the government be? Should it support only on the promotion of entrepreneurship through organization of events, supporting incubators, the angel networks, so, or should it even become, as Israel has done, a VC fund investing in the companies and having really an important stake in the businesses that rise from each country. There are many stakeholders, as we saw in, from the panelists we have on stage, from government agencies, institutions, private and public incubators and research centers. And also what we've realized is that in the innovation hub, in the process of bringing an invention to an innovation uh, through Avi's experience of a medtech company and also Ilya's implication in a, a high-tech institution is to really help the, on, the researcher execute and bring the project to market so that it has an impact on society, may it be monetizable or not. Finally, crucial what we understood was education, that education will be one of the main drivers to promote and build more entrepreneurs in today and tomorrow's society. And indeed, today's education, as we had examples from Ilya, is that we are completely outdated with how to build entrepreneurs. And this is really a topic that all governments and private uh, stakeholders must, must take into account. I can only conclude with this with a more a general quote, which is indeed for all stakeholders, maybe the government, the students, the entrepreneurs, the incubators, and everyone else, the biggest risk is not to take risk. Thank you very much.